Hi y'all, thanks so much for clicking into this video. If this is your first time here and we haven't met yet, then welcome, my name is Lori. If you've been here before, then thanks so much for coming back. It's great to see you. Let's hang out for a few minutes. Now today's video is all about how to reduce jet lag. And if you're someone who travels from time to time, or if you're somebody who's getting ready to travel, you've never done it before, these are really important tips to make sure you get the most out of your trip by not suffering with jet lag longer than you need to. Now, before we get started, I am just going to tell you right up front, I don't think there is absolutely any way possible to not feel some form of jet lag at all if you're traveling into a time zone that's, you know, like, 10 or more hours different than your home time zone. You're gonna feel a little bit of it. When we travel to a place that's 10 or more hours different than our home time zone, we are over our jet lag in less than 24 hours. Now, he's over jet lag even faster. Like, jet lag just does not affect him the same way it does me. I have a little bit of a harder time. I'm sure that doesn't surprise any of you. But I'm over it within a day, day and a half at the most. So let me tell you how we do this so maybe you can do it too. Now, before I start worrying about what I'm going to have in my bag and which bag I'm gonna take, I make sure I plan a very comfy outfit. Now, my go-to is a pair of comfy sneakers. Just in case I have to run through the airport to catch a connecting flight, I don't wanna be in uncomfortable shoes to do that. I need to be able to do that without having to worry about, you know, breaking an ankle or a heel or whatever. So my go-to long haul flight outfit is a pair of athletic shoes with some black leggings, a tank top, just like this one, and a hoodie because airplanes get cold. If I'm warm and I don't need the hoodie, I can always tie it around my waist. I don't have to worry about carrying it or storing it or anything like that. But chances are I'm gonna be chilly on the plane and I'm glad to have that hoodie. But I'm wearing stretchy pants, I'm super comfortable. I'm in shoes that I can run through an airport in and shoes that are easy to slip off on the plane so I can just be wearing my socks on the plane. Now with that outfit on a long haul flight, I do wear these light compression socks. I know, I get it. They're not sexy socks at all. I am fortunate I'm somebody who doesn't really have any circulation problems, but I don't want to be somebody who starts having circulation problems, which circulation and fluid retention in your feet and ankles and legs is really, really common in long haul flights. And so it's important to get up and walk around. But even if you're not going to be getting up and walking around, you can still wear compression socks to keep that fluid from retaining in your feet, legs, in the first place. So I use these light compression socks. They're a graduated compression, which means they're tighter around the ankles and not tight around my calf because I don't want that constricted feeling right behind my knee. And I find these really comfortable, highly recommend. Now, the most important thing you can do to beat jet lag at your destination, or even when you come home from your destination, is to make sure you are properly prepared for your long haul flight. That's right. The things you can do for yourself to overcome jet lag is absolutely as soon as possible, begin the minute you get on the plane. And when you get on that plane and they close the door and you're taxiing down the runway like you're ready to go, what you have with you and available to you right there at your seat in the cabin will make or break your ability to beat jet lag as is most possible. So let me tell you what those things are and why they're so important. Now, before we get started with what we need to have with us, we need to talk about what bag you need to have so that you have all of your things available to you. I have two favorites at two very different price points. You can get both of them on Amazon and everything I talk about in this video is going to be linked down below because I'm an Amazon shopper. Like I buy a lot of stuff on Amazon and so it's easy for me to share those links. Now this first one, this backpack is relatively inexpensive. I think it was around $40 and I have carried this backpack all over the world. The zippers stand up to even my packing, which, you know, speaks very highly of this piece. What I love about it is, of course, the volume. Like you can see, there's tons of space inside this thing. It's got lots of different pockets to carry all of your things that you need to carry with you. It's got a little clip for your keys. It's got, it's got pockets for water bottles, which are fantastic. It's even got this pocket in the back that would be very hard for any pickpocket to get into. And in this part of the backpack, it has one of those RFID protected pockets so that you can put your stuff in there that you would worry about being digitally stolen from you. So it's got a great layer of security. But the thing that makes this really fantastic is it's got this built-in pocket in here. You can see it's way down in there where you can keep a charging bank. And that's fantastic because when you're out on the go, you still need to be able to charge your phone or your camera or whatever it is you've brought with you. We're all carrying electronics. So you can just plug in right here. And this is my phone charger, but you know, anything you can charge through a USB. 
you can, you can charge there. And that is a fantastic feature that I love. And whenever I am carrying a computer with me, I carry this backpack. Even though the other bag I'm about to show you, I probably slightly prefer. I don't prefer that bag when I'm carrying a computer. This backpack has a built-in computer sleeve and that just makes it so functional, so easy to get through security because you know if you're going through TSA security, you've got to be able to take your computer out. And this makes it quick and easy to get through security when you don't have to deal with an extra layer of a sleeve to take your computer out of as well. Anything that gets me through TSA security faster, I really appreciate. But I will tell you, I'm one of those rare YouTubers on the planet that doesn't want to travel with a computer. If I don't have to travel with my laptop, I really prefer not to. And when I'm not traveling with my laptop, I really prefer this bag by Briggs & Riley. Now I know, when you look at this one down below, you're gonna see this one is pricey. It is, I, I'm, I'm not even gonna to try to tell you it's not. But what I will tell you is that it is worth every dime. The reason I prefer this bag over a backpack is that it's on wheels, which means I can roll it and I'm not having to carry it. Now, the captain, my husband probably prefers it as well because I don't get tired rolling my bag. If I get tired carrying a heavy backpack, he is quite the gentleman, he will carry it for me. So he probably prefers I have this bag with me even more than I do. But look at it, it is great. It has this big space that is open where everything can be easily stored. It's got side pockets that are RFID. It's got this pocket on the side that opens up and carries a water bottle perfectly. It is really, truly fantastic. It even has an integrated system on the back that allows it to latch onto all of your other Briggs & Riley bags. So their entire line is designed to work together. And that is something I can really appreciate. I like it when things just work the way they should and I don't have to fight with them. Because let me tell you, I am not about fighting with luggage in the airport, ever. Since I have become a carry-on only traveler, the quality of the bag that I carry is so incredibly important to me. I just don't wanna be fuddling with wheels that don't roll well or zippers that don't stay closed or, or anything that doesn't stay stable even when I pack it the way I pack it. I need it to just work. And Briggs and & Riley absolutely just works for me. So all of my luggage now is Briggs & Riley. But I get it, it is pricey. For me, it's an investment because I will have this luggage for more than a decade and I will carry it all over the world. But if your budget doesn't allow for Briggs & Riley, that is not a problem. There are so many great alternatives, not just this backpack. You can check on Amazon and you can find so many great alternatives that you can have delivered to you like within two days. So just because this is what I use doesn't mean you need to use it. It's just that I use it because I enjoy it, but you do you. So now that we've picked a bag, I'm going with the Briggs & Riley cabin bag for the rest of this video because I don't wanna carry my laptop and I don't wanna to have to ask the captain to carry my backpack. So the Briggs & Riley bag is what we're gonna be packing this stuff up in. So now let's get to the things that you wanna keep in your bag because they are going to help you beat jet lag in the most effective way possible. First thing you're gonna need is your ID. Like I love this little passport wallet and I've had this for a while. Um, what I love about it, it's already got a pin in it because when you're flying into a different country, you wanna have a pin with you because you're going to be handed a customs form when you're on the plane. And you wanna be able to fill out your own customs form without having to wait for somebody to loan you a pin. It also has these little slots where you can put SIM cards or in my case, memory cards because I use a lot of camera, camera memory cards, credit cards, um, any other things, cash, anything you need to carry with you. So that is something you're gonna to have to have on you to get through security and wherever you're going. So before you even start worrying about what else you're gonna pack in your bag, make sure you have your passport ID. I keep mine right up front. That way I know exactly where it is and I can just unzip it and hand it to the agent when I need to. So now that we have our ID, the second most very important thing you're gonna to need to make sure you have with you is any medication you take. Any medication you take on a regular basis. I know this, this little pill box looks a bit extreme, but this is four weeks. When I'm traveling, I'm traveling for more than one week and I'm often traveling for just over two weeks. So those pill organizers that are for one week or only two weeks don't work for me. I don't wanna to have to be trying to refill them on the road. I want this all stocked and ready to go so that I have it with, and I don't have to worry about medication on the road. I take a lot of vitamins and supplements and I wanna keep doing that as I travel. So this works really well for me. Now, before I tell you my next tip, I want to offer a disclaimer right here. I am not a nurse, I am not a doctor, I am not a pharmacist, I'm not any of those things. I am just a person that takes a couple of prescription medicines and I take a lot of supplements. What I do is the minute I get on the plane, I start living like I am already in that other time zone. 
So if it is midnight in that other time zone and I have my supplements that I take before I go to bed, I take those at that time. If it is nine o'clock in the morning in the time zone that I'm going to, I take my morning supplements and medication at that time. Check with your doctor before you do this. I talked to my doctor about it before I did it. She said I was all good, so that's what I do. The minute I get on the plane, I know what time it is in my destination time zone, and I take whatever medication or supplements that I would normally be taking at that time on the plane. So let's get that packed. Now the next thing that you're going to have with you while you're traveling is glasses. If you wear contacts, I highly recommend that you don't wear contacts while you're traveling on these long haul flights. The air in the plane is very dry. You might need to sleep while you're in the air and it's just more comfortable to do that if you can be wearing your glasses. These are my glasses. And it's just so much more comfortable to be doing that in glasses than it is in contacts. Dry, sleepy contacts are just not comfortable. So what I do is when I get on the plane, after the plane has taken off and the captain says, okay, you can get up and go to the bathroom, I will get up, I will take my contacts out, put them in my contact case and put my glasses on. It makes it so much more comfortable to travel and start living in that new time zone, especially if I need to be going to sleep. So I always have my glasses with me. Okay, so we are setting ourselves up for success to reduce the jet lag we're gonna have in our destination by packing up all the right things to have with us in the cabin. We've already got our medication and we've already got our glasses. Now at this point, I will tell you, a lot of people enjoy bringing a sleep mask, something that'll block the light, kind of block the activity going on around you. Um, I'm not one of those people. I did buy a sleep mask and I bought one of those raised ones so that I would, it wouldn't be flat against my eyelids, but I am so dedicated to my eyelash routine that I have really long natural eyelashes. And even with that raised mask that had a loft to it, I still could feel my eyelashes. It, it still felt, it was, it was so uncomfortable for me. So that's why I'm not showing you the sleep mask. I will link the one I purchased down below. I'm sure it's comfortable enough for somebody who doesn't, you know, do all this crazy stuff to their lashes like I do. But because I am that person that does all the lash stuff and enjoys every minute of it, I'm not gonna show you the mask. I didn't use it. In my experience, especially on these long haul flights, they keep the cabin lights pretty low anyway. So it's always been pretty easy for me to sleep on the plane without the mask. I hope it is for you too. But if not, get a mask. It's better to have it and not need it rather than need it and wish you had it, right? Now, another essential way to set yourself up for success in your destination and reduce the amount of jet lag you feel as much as possible is to make sure the space you're in while you're flying is clean. I hear you, like, what does that got to do with jet lag? Well, let me tell you. If you get sick because you picked something up on the plane, it's very likely gonna be hitting you about that time when you're getting settled in your destination and you're ready to go out and have a good time. That's why you went there, right? You don't wanna be one in the bathroom with some kind of stomach distress. You don't wanna have a cold, you just, you don't wanna feel bad. So you wanna have just some little sanitizing wipes that you can wipe down your seat, wipe down your tray, definitely wipe down your tray, and wipe down everything else that's kind of around you just so that you can try to keep yourself as healthy as possible while you're traveling. If you don't feel well, the jet lag is going to affect you even more than it would if you were feeling your best. So take a minute, Wipe down your space with a sanitizing wipe and set yourself up for success so that you don't pick up any bugs while you're on the plane. Hand sanitizer, same thing. Every airplane bathroom I've been in had plenty of soap and water. You were, I was able to wash my hands with soap and water. But you never know. And if the airplane bathroom doesn't have any soap in it, you don't wanna have to go out, leave the bathroom, go tell a flight attendant you need soap, wait for her to bring it back, hope they have some on the plane so that you can wash your hands. So set yourself up for success, like I'm gonna say over and over and over again. I'm such an idiot, right? I love that phrase because I feel like it's so empowering. Every one of us has the ability to, you know, do everything we can to make sure we have positive experiences in the world. Set yourself up for success is what that phrase represents to me. And uh, I love that. So take some hand sanitizer so that you have this option to clean your hands if you need it. If you don't need it, good. If you do, you'll be so glad you had it, right? Now I keep my hand sanitizer and my sanitizing wipes right in the very front pocket of my bag. I don't put those items in my toiletry bag because I want to have easy access to them and I don't necessarily wanna to have to pull out my whole toiletry bag to find my hand sanitizer or my sanitizing wipes. So I just keep them by themselves right in the front of the bag. Another thing I keep right in the front of the bag with the hand sanitizer and sanitizing wipes is some lip balm. 
like your lips are gonna get chapped when you're on the plane. It's dry. Even though you're drinking as much water as you possibly can, trying to stay hydrated, you're still likely to get some chapped lips and some dry skin. So I always keep a hand lotion and some lip balm right in the front of my bag as well. Now the hand lotion is gonna have to go in your liquids bag when you go through TSA security. But once you're through security, you can just pull it out of your liquids bag, your toiletries bag, and stick it in the front of your bag so that it's right there when you need it. Cause you're gonna need it several times, especially on those longer haul flights. You wanna make sure it's easy to get to. Now the next thing that you're going to want to have with you in your cabin bag, not up stowed away in your carry-on, but in your cabin bag, the one you can reach from your seat, is your toiletries bag. Now let me tell you how I use this. When I'm traveling, I set an alarm for about an hour before we re reach our destination, an hour before we land. And then I know that it's time for me to get up and go to the restroom and kind of freshen up. At this point, I've probably been on the plane 12, 13, 17, 18 hours. It just makes me feel better to freshen up before I get off the plane. I wanna be able to brush my teeth. I wanna be able to, you know, kind of clean myself up a little bit. You know what freshen up yourself means. So um, I keep all of those things in my toiletry bag and I keep my toiletry bag in my cabin bag so that I have it available to me to just take to the restroom, get cleaned up, get freshened up and feel my best when I get off the plane. Now, another thing that I always have with me when I'm flying in my cabin bag is this wrap. It's actually not even a wrap. It's a Turkish towel. It is really, really soft because it's made with long fiber cotton. It, you can use it as a towel. It dries really quickly. You can use it as a swimsuit cover up. You can tie this around you and into a little dress if that's your thing, like I've done that. Or, you know, you can just wrap yourself up on the plane because sometimes it's really cold on the plane. And even if you're wearing a hoodie and you're all bundled up, you might still find yourself a little chilled. So this is something I always have with me. I have used this as a beach towel. I have used this as a bath towel. I have used this as a wrap. I've used it as a blanket. I've used it in airports. I've used it in trains, planes, and automobiles. Like you can use this thing anywhere. And I love these. I have so many of them. In fact, on our boat, this is all we use as towels on our boat. I use them as pool towels. Like these things are ridiculously useful and they last and last and last. And every time you wash and dry them, they just get softer and softer. But if you don't have the ability to dry it, you can wash it and hang it to dry and they're thin. So they dry really quick. Like I can't even tell you enough how much I would recommend these. These are just absolutely fantastic. If you don't check out anything else that I've linked below, you should probably check out these Turkish shells that you, you won't be sorry. That's all I can say is you won't be sorry. So this is something that definitely goes with me. Now I do travel with my tablet and this is what, this is my Surface Pro. And this is what I prefer to travel with rather than my laptop. I can watch movies. I can work. I can transfer files. I cannot edit videos from this. I mean, you could edit like a super simple video, but I'm working on my editing skills. I'm trying to become more advanced in my editing and this isn't gonna cut it for me. This is what I prefer to keep in my cabin bag rather than a laptop. And you can see that this fits just perfectly in this back pocket. It's like it was made for it, right? Now that brings us to the last thing and I know everything in my bag is really, really important, but I would give up a lot. I wouldn't give up all of that stuff, but I would give up a lot of it if I had to for just these. And these are my Bose noise canceling headphones. And these are absolutely freaking fantastic if you're flying, especially on those long haul flights. If you're trying to beat jet lag, if you're trying to reduce the effects of jet lag, you need to sleep according to your sleep schedule at your destination regardless of how long you've been awake. Now these noise canceling headphones work so very well to truly cancel out all the ambient noise around you. That is likely to be somebody talking. It could be the flight attendants going up and down the aisles, helping all the other, helping all the passengers and yourself. It could be a screaming child. It could be anything, but I promise you it will be at least airplane engine noise. Like jet engine noise is a real thing. It's loud. And these noise canceling headphones just take that away. Just take that away and leave you in a calm, serene sounding space. You can play music 
if you want to. You can watch the in-flight movies if you want to. It, it does come with a cable that plugs right into the screens where you can watch movies and stuff. It is Bluetooth connected to my um, tablet. Like, if you don't consider anything else on this list, I mean, I know I said the same thing about the Turkish towel, but if you don't consider anything else on this list, consider the Turkish towel and the headphones. I know there's a lot of different brands of, of noise canceling headphones and I have no, I don't have any experience with any others, but I saw a lot of them have really good reviews. I will link these below because I did buy them on Amazon and I absolutely recommend these. I stand by these 100%. They're fantastic. And they fit as well. So you can see, We've got everything in here and still room for more. If you want to bring a book, you want to bring a water bottle. If you want to bring anything else you want to bring, you still have plenty of room to do that. But that's enough for me. Now the trick to using all of these things, to beat the jet lag is to begin living in your destination time zone the minute you get on the plane. So even if you're not tired, but it's the middle of the night where you're going and you're going to be sleeping at this time, when you get there, close your eyes, put on your noise canceling headphones, put some nice lotion on your hands, put some lip balm on, practice some breathing exercises, whatever it takes to relax yourself and try to sleep. If you can't sleep, rest as much as possible. Now the opposite is also true. If you have a late night flight and you're flying out the time that you normally would be going to bed, but it is early in the day at your destination, stay awake. Do everything you can to stay awake. Play a game, watch a movie. Don't watch a movie that relaxes you. Watch something action packed. If you're watching a relaxing movie, if you're like me, you'll just fall asleep watching the movie. Do everything you can to stay awake. The most important tip to beat jet lag at your destination is to start living in your destination time zone the minute you get on the plane. You'll be so glad you did. Now, because you're just as human as I am, you're still gonna feel a little bit of jet lag. That's just the way it is. We're humans, we have circadian rhythms, we all have our own schedule, internal clocks. You're gonna feel a little bit of jet lag when you get to your destination. The best tip I have for you to get through that as soon as possible is to suck it up, buttercup. And I know that sounds horribly harsh, horribly, horribly harsh. And I don't mean it to be ugly or harsh, but if it is the morning when you get there, even if your body says it's time to go to bed, don't do it. Go sightseeing, unpack in your hotel, find something to keep yourself, to keep your body busy, keep moving so that you can stay awake as long as possible. You might find yourself where you just can't stay awake and you need a little bit of sleep and that's okay. Limit it as much as you possibly can. But if you absolutely need to take a nap, don't allow yourself to sleep for more than 90 minutes. Now, 90 minutes gives most adults a full sleep cycle. So that means you'll go into your REM sleep, you'll go into your deep sleep, and you'll start to come out of your deep sleep all within 90 minutes. Allow yourself that one sleep cycle and then get up. Get up and get moving so that when it is time to go to bed, you are tired. Now that first night where you do go to bed, especially if you've been up for 24, 36 hours, you are just gonna be zonked. Like you're gonna be exhausted and you're going to sleep well. It's gonna be hard to get up in the morning, but get up in the morning and get moving as early as you possibly can. I absolutely depend on coffee and caffeine to help get me going. I know a lot of people have different beliefs on that, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's this, what is that. You do you and I'll root for you. I'm drinking coffee, whether anybody roots for me or not. Like it's, it's just a thing, I'm gonna do it. Now that second night you're there, you're probably still gonna be pretty tired because you are excited to be in your destination. You've done everything you can to stay awake. You've taken no more than a 90 minute nap. So you're gonna be pretty exhausted. But it's this sleep cycle, this night, that is going to have you waking up very early in the morning. Like, you know, 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Don't get up. Your brain is gonna be like, hey, it's time to be up. It's time to start your day. It's time to get moving. Tell your brain, no, it is not time. I am in a different place and we are not getting up. Dip, lay there, do everything you can to relax yourself, clear your mind. Even if you can't go back to sleep, let your body rest. Let your body just feel heavy, feel comforted, and rest until it is time to get up in your real time zone. Now in my experience, that's all it takes to beat the jet lag in a time zone that's 12 or more hours different from my home time zone. If the time zone is only seven or eight hours different, 
I can power through that pretty quick. I feel the effects of it for about 24 hours after I land, but that's it. I hope some of these tips and some of these things work for you as well as they do for me. Do you have anything else to share? Like for all of you travelers who travel to different time zones on a regular basis, let me know what did I leave off that absolutely works for you that is a must have. I would love to learn from you and pick up some new tips as well. Thanks so much for hanging out with me for a few minutes today. It's been great to see you. Until I see you in the next video, bye y'all.